you so much. I, I don't need any further introduction. <laughs> they all refreshed us back in a little break. I'll be talking to us today about the Green Bridge Electricity Project as a stable model for reliable renewable energy deployment in Nigeria. But before I go into the presentation and proper, I want to give us a brief description of how the idea came about. Um, during my undergraduate internship, that was my second year precisely, with um, Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria and Option subsidiary of the Real Dutch Shell Corporation. I was in the electrical utility department and normally we go for we do go for periodic maintenance in sites located in the most settlements. There was a very ironic trend in within the facility, company facility, well developed, but just a few meters away from the facility, the remote settlement, the remote inhabitants of the settlement, zero or nothing, total black. And ironically, these are the people that generate up to 90% of Nigerian GDP and GNP. They are totally in the dark, no development project. So that got me thinking, I started thinking of ways to um, better their life and as a young undergraduate engineer, I didn't um, know how much I can impact to pressuring the lives of these people. Then precisely in my third year, a platform came up, the IEEE President's Change the World competition. And I went to a cyber cafe, and I was checking my mail, I saw the advert for the, the competition. So I was like, I told my friend, wow, this is a very good avenue. Here we can see how we can make an appreciable impact to bettering the lives of these people. And the funny thing is that in this Niger Delta region of Nigeria, there are quite over 200 of such remote settlements who have little or no development going on. So, we tried the little we can, then I had no knowledge, or little, very little knowledge on renewable, so we started researching, putting one, two together, and just in the very night of the deadline of the competition, we sent in our, our brief. <laughs> so sorry, what else? Sorry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was about three hours to the deadline, we sent in our entry hoping our voice will be heard. But back at that time, my, one of my colleagues and my primary partner then he was like, call me one day, fine. I enjoy the enthusiasm and the passion which you're going on with this stuff. But how do you think you're going to make an impact when you have folks in China, you have folks in Japan, you have folks in India, you have folks in, the, in Europe and the United States of America who have access to the best technologies, the best labs, and here we are in Nigeria, we have little or nothing. How do you think you're going to compete with these people? Like I told you, you know, we have to try our best and hope that the best will come out of it. Then, surprisingly, by, I think it was March 2010, during, after the pre-evaluation, I checked online I saw that we we are among the top 17 projects. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> 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 it was literally what, what we had done then and it was just a brief and theoretical description of what the idea was all about. Then I called my friend. I told him there was a slot, of, so we um, can earn more votes by having your friends and other members of I should in vote which will also increase your chances of margin top. So I started calling my other friends that were actually pool members, getting them to vote. But disappointingly, uh, it was only like five people that actually got to vote. <laughs> so continue. Then about June 2010, when the final evaluation was completed, I was quite overwhelmed again that we matched Third general, that's we're fourth out of a general of about 
200 entries globally. That came as a very I mean, interesting surprise to I and my friend. Then, by coming out for we were entitled to the, um, the title of an outstanding student humanitarian and a cash award of about a thousand dollars. We're very happy. At least our voice have been heard and. After the award, we kind of relaxed a bit due to school pressure and other things. Then some things, like I guess it should be my inner man, keep calling the game, see? <laughs> the fact is, like, you've not realized the potential of this your idea. Mm. What makes you think that the IEEE, or what, 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 what do you think made the IEEE rate this project far higher than an entries from um, Imperial College London and other very renowned universities. So, again, it got me thinking, had literally no knowledge on um, development, community development, no knowledge on business and everything. I just was relying on go to school, get your degree, and go look for a work somewhere. And I was I started researching a little bit beyond my field and, and trying to get. Because before you can apply for grants, and definitely know you have to present a proposal, and it requires a little or a little bit of um, executive and business knowledge to do that. So we started putting up something. After we were we felt with um, got to an extent, we applied to the Ashley Foundation for a 40% in sponsorship of the project budget. And overwhelmingly again, it was approved. <laughs> and I think at this point now, I can now go into my presentation. First of all, I will, want, I will discuss the prevailing situation in the Nigerian electricity industry. After that, I, I will go into describing the need for the project and why we think so lies the option for Nigeria. And after that, I will discuss the technical and the business model which we've delivered so far and also the next plan we have. So the next slide, this is like a little appraisal of the Nigerian power sector. We have seven um, power plants from fuel and coal power stations. We have one thermal power plant, we have about three hydro power stations and three gas turbine power stations. And Nigeria is the, the country with an overall population of about 167 million people. And ironically, and also Nigeria is you know, like, has an oil export of about 2 million barrels per day. But ironically, the duration, the capacity of, total generating capacity in Nigeria is about a little above 2,600 megawatts, wow. which represents to a very, 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 very low energy per capita. And also, only about 45 percent of the population is connected to the national grid. And those that are even connected, uh, guess we'll have, uh, the, the supply is very, very unstable and unreliable. In, in some quarters, they stay without light for quite up to six months. And those that have I mean, the, the, the greatest amount of supply have an interruption of about three hours a day with like generalized situation in Nigerian case. Then those below the poverty line are about 65% of the population. Then also continue the sorry. Also continue the appraisal of the power sector. We have here the energy conversion per capita of several nations. You can see in the US we have about 12,400 kilowatt hour per capita in Ghana which is one of the fastest developing economies in Nigeria. We have about 431 kilowatt hour per capita. But Nigeria, whose population is like about five times or even more above that of Ghana, is having it's just about 180 kilowatt hour per capita, which to me is an ISO. The appraisal I just discussed so far, this is something like, let me talk like, to get to appreciate it. 
the first flight, as you can see, there's an oil facility, oil production facility there. We just take a look at the surrounding environment. No development. And people living here are contributing um, up to like say 20% of the country's total income. And they have little or no development. And that was the case in virtually all the areas. And um, for, for those of us who do not know, the Nigeria of region is like the 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 Nigerian region is more or less like the backbone of the Nigerian economy. That's where you have all the, the oils that are settled, oil deposits and all that. And precisely Potapo, which houses a lot of multinational oil producing companies. And because of the, the intervention of rivers and all that, a lot of them are separated from the mainland. And the river state has about over 200 communities with no access to any form of electricity. Then why would we believe solar is the best option to create one? It's readily available from the chart we see here from I got this chart from EIA US. Nigeria falls within the region that has between the minimum of about five to four five to six average sun hours a day, which is quite high mostly because it's we have a different region of the world. Then, the Greek, there are several Greek expansion complexities. And over the years, due to several neglect and very poor maintenance culture, the national grid is almost in a near collapse nature. Even some of the power plants that I mentioned earlier cannot be integrated with the grid because it will lead to a total collapse of the grid. Because the, the grid doesn't have enough capacity to house um, those energy from those power, power stations. And also we have long, solar has a long lifespan with flexible maintenance plan. It's environmentally friendly and that improving that it has a decline, appreciable decline in cost with improved research and development, improved efficiency and reliability, and easy installation and expansion. Then our project overview. When we came up with the project idea, we had four goals in mind. The first one was to provide affordable, reliable electricity to remove settlements in various in regions in Nigeria. The second one was to convert the message of, because totally in Nigeria, it's just now that the message of renewable energy is, is catching some wind. So we hope through our project to convert the message of um, renewable energy to put policy makers in the light in Nigerian economic environment. Then thirdly, we want to use the success of the project as a model to inspire the Nigerian youths that they too can make a difference in development both within the country and beyond. Then lastly, we want to efficiently use student volunteers as a model to impart knowledge to the inhabitants of the settlement. Then the current status of our project, I will discuss that during the webinar about talking about the milestone. Then the project justification from all I've discussed so far is imperative that our project is in line with what is actually needed to foster development in Nigeria. Nigerians are very hardworking and very creative people, which with little or no I mean, effort we can expand it to very amazing heights. The initial project technical model we had, that was when we didn't have much knowledge of renewable energy. On the generation side, we were hoping of generating five kilowatts of reliable upgrade and should power about 20 homes, which is quite not cost effective. Then also we have 40 interconnected we had then in our design 14 that connected 210 solar panels and 1400 amp power batteries, 24 volt recycle batteries, then a 5 kilowatt off grid inverter, 80 amp charge controller, and remote monitoring facilities. 
But what we had in mind when we initiate the project, we could implement the project, we coach the inhabitants of the settlement to take ownership, to become the operators. But then through the remote monitoring facility of the system, we can be able to get real time details of um, what the project, uh, how the project is faring, if need be coming to provide more and more advanced technical support. Then on the transmission side, to compensate for transmission losses that, that may be obtainable along the line, we put in place a ring network on the continuum of a 30 of a 30 amount cable, 30 millimeter amount cable that will cover the perimeter like to surround the entire perimeter. So it's not like an institution whereby it's linear, whereby um, the person closest to the to the grid will have more capacity than another person staying way, way down off the grid. It'll be like a ring network. It'll be like a centralized resource. At every point in the in the ring network, the energy obtainable is the same and very stable. Then we designed for a serial network consisting of a six millimeter mount cable tapped from the ring to them specific. Let me do like a little chat. See, this is the power station. And from here, this is the inverter. From here, we run the ring and the perimeter. These are clusters of houses. So from the ring, we tap at certain nodes that are closest to where we have more concentration of certain of dwellers. Then from this ring, from this node now, we now distribute using like a star topology to the individual houses to improve the integrity of the entire system. Is this AC or DC? Yeah, AC. from AC. The, oh, AC, yeah, it's AC. It's quite a misconception from with our discussion yesterday. It's a 220 voltage AC distribution network. And we also designed to power as in wire the individual houses then included insulators and emergency devices at designated location, the lighting point and sockets for the appliances in the, in the various houses. But from extensive research, we saw that this was not uh, economically viable because it was more or less overscaled for what we had in mind. It's generating a lot and we kind of had little on, or very minimal consumption uh, relating to the, the supply capacity. Then, no one got drafted into the CSI model in we started in exchanging ideas and knowledge with members of the team and because we have very limited, I had very limited um, bandwidth resources, I not been able to connect with the weekly CSI meeting. So normally what I do after the meetings, I go through the mailings and take notes. If I have any contribution, I will just mail it to the organizers to the shared reading. So over time, we found out that our initial model was not sustainable and economically viable to meet with the needs in the system we had in mind. So we kind of modified project design to a micro scale railway system to efficiently meet the energy needs of the room settlement at the most economic value to suit their income levels while generating marginal and this is in line with the some blazer model. Because basically primarily what, what we had in those because they didn't have any prior in the experience of electricity, all they could have is just basic lighting and maybe to charge their phones and other very low energy appliances. And we have our um, business model development, which is also in line with the CSI model. Then on our market analysis, 
on securing the partnership of the UNDP Bank of Industry and River State Government Access to Renewable Energy Project, which has the sole aim of enhancing access to renewable energy for remote dwellers and small and medium scale industries. And this is like the River State Sustainable Development Agency, which is like <coughs> the development arm of the River State Government. They already have something like this, which is and in the many agro-based industries situated in about 30 communities within the states and they had this problem of power. When they, they designed this, they initially um, intended to power the diesel generators, but after a while they noticed that it wasn't sustainable due to the high cost of running this. So they, they bought into the um, UNDP Bank of Industry idea of sourcing for more alternative ways of powering this. So that was us to to I mean, measure them. So like here now, this is a this is a poultry pen consisting of each of like one thousand beds. Then this is a like a mini fish farm consisting of ten fish tanks. This is an administrative office and this is a water thing. So from our from our studies we and uh, survey in this field. We that the equipment that has the most energy demand in the system is water which has about 1.5 horsepower capacity. So on just proposing on how to merge this with also powering the community settlement which has about 80 homes that has no power. So the best way to have is in doing a, a dual system a two kilowatt system to power the the agro industry and the 1.5 kilowatt system of the Sun Blazer franchise network to serve the community. Then why would people buy from us? We from our surveys, people spend as much as ten dollars every month on kerosene and other energy sources just to get light and to do other basic Needs. Then our competitors are the, the big guys, the TNEs, the diesel models in Nigeria, who will go at any length to ensure that they are still in business. But our competitive edge is that they, their, own, their own niche, their own market niche is quite different from ours because they center themselves on the big industries who buy a um, large in turn, um, large quantity of diesel to power their facilities. Then our market is that expansion strategy is of run our pilot, which just started last month. And but the full scale implementation will be com coming up by September. And we are still doing our community entry and negotiation with all the stakeholders involved in <coughs> the project. So after the pilot we analyze um, the, the progress of the, pro the project so far and, and do our lesson learned and all that and we now devise the more sustainable strategies to expand the, the project to other models. When in securing partnership with the UNDP, they had a different idea from what we initially had. From our, our own standpoint, all we initially wanted to do was a purely humanitarian based project. But from their own standpoint, they wanted to create a commercially viable and sustainable business or enterprise that can be replicated in several regions within. So more or less, they extended our, our vision. So in working with them and in line with the CSI, we have normally our business had, had an implementation period of one year, which is illustrated with charts. Then we we have a market projection within track, like five feet market projection projection. We starting with about first community of twenty and adding one system every six months. We have um, projected that our listing will rise to about nine hundred and twenty houses by the end of the, the fifth year. And um, this chart shows our our, let's actually our annual revenue, we benchmark the cost of about $8.40 per 
per month on and we are working on the assumption that we'll be powering twenty houses. I mean if we have to increase our our projections to eighty, which we are starting with. So we have an, an investment outlay that at the end of the fifth year our annual revenue will be way up to about six hundred and something thousand dollars. Then the next chart shows our equipment cost from the very first year to the fifth year. Then the the third chart is our the investment outlay in from the the, the, the projects will break even a little after the third year. Then this the next chart is the cost of capital at a rate of fifteen percent. Next, I discuss our project milestones. And like I earlier said, we have the article in the foundation grant award of about $44,521 for the pilot. And initially, we were supposed to start the project about June last year, but because of the general election and the one year compulsory national service, which the three of us on the team are actively, actively involved in. We have to then seek to defer the project by one year to June this year. So we've officially received to them that we have about commencing the project and we're expecting their feedback. And we've also registered the project as a social enterprise with the Public Affairs Commission of Nigeria. Then another positive factor about the business is that in Nigeria the as a regulatory policy that if you're generating below one megawatt of electricity, you need not come for a license. All you need to do is just to inform the regulatory body that you're in operation. So in case you need any type of technical or other support from them, they will already be aware of your existence and to extend their hand of fellowship to you. And also if you're distributing and selling energy to the tune of below 50 kilowatt, you also do not need to um, apply for a license. So means that our project is way in line with the regulatory policy of the country. And the UNDP Bank of Industry Partnership, which I've already discussed, then the role of the River State Sustainable Development Agency in the whole partnership is to create an enabling environment and for easy entry and exit from all the communities we hope to carry out the project in. And that's our website. And the impact on this, uh, impact projections, the impact on the student volunteers. Like Mr. Sudan rightly pointed out, we need to start from at an early stage to revolution the mind of our students to see themselves as uh, change factors in society. So we by um, engaging the service of student volunteers want to kind of change their mindset from being job seekers to employers of labor and change agents in society upon graduation. Then the impact on the beneficiary community by inducting the project, we believe, will increase the capacity of the beneficiary community. Normally in the river, the river states in, of Nigeria, the, the major activities are either fishing or farming. So we believe in by citing the project in the community will improve their capacity and give them a better way of going into and the global impact. Most of because of the very poor infrastructural elements <coughs> in place in the oil, oil producing industry in Nigeria, about 80% of the gas in products of the production process is fled. Slate, which has a very, very, very high significant negative impact on the environment. So we believe citing our projects in this very critical region will help to reduce, as in to maintain a kind of a balance whereby you don't get to emit more than what is already being emitted. We will shift people from using conventional energy sources to using cleaner energy sources. And in that line, also, one of the winners of the UNDP award, because there are 11 winners for 11 focal states in Nigeria, and they have this idea of, they have this project of a, 
the biofuel like from Jakshofa, which is very, very environmentally friendly. So we intend to also initiate that in the community to, to entirely remove fossil fuel usage and emission in which will lead to a global impact of reducing emission. And this is the project in where all classmates in school who have the vision and the passion of creating positive change in various communities. Then our executive advisor is engineer professor Chukudebe, who is currently the chair of the IGP in Nigeria section. And our technical advisor in Nigeria is engineer Raka, he's with the electrical design team of SPDC. Then on our risk analysis, we identify debt, hostility, vandalism, insecurity of projecting, pro project site donation by community, both technology and assimilation, the type of maintenance competence. But the good thing is by buying into what has been the knowledge I've learned from this workshop and, and primarily the idea Mr. Dan read, if we get them to, I mean, to see that they are actual benefactors and the change agent in the whole process is to eliminate most of these risks pointed out here. And from now, in the project, in the projections we have now, we won a $30,000 award from the UNDP Bank of Industry Partnership, $10,000 of which was stipulated to create a corporate structure around the project idea, which we already had. So we kind of devoted the $10,000 into also into the pilot project. And the remaining $10,000 is to um, hire services. They will help us hire services of professional business development and consultancy firms, which will help us to develop a more streamlined and sustainable business model um, that will be beneficial to the project. So I, I, I didn't quite catch there at the very beginning. You were talking about the award. Did you did you win the top award? You what place? How that? The actual yeah. What? Yes. Okay. Yeah. By when we submitted the project entry after the assessment, we were rated for for out of about two hundred entries. So we are entitled to a title of the Outstanding Student Humanitarian, and that got us um, closer to the IEEE. And it was after that we were invited to join the HTC Humanitarian Technology Challenge, and subsequently the CSI. And then you also said something about the fuel that was burned or something. It was a word I didn't quite understand. That was. Flaming or flaming? Flaring. Gas flaring. Oh, flaring. Yeah. Oh, they're just burning it off. Yeah, just burning it off. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, you know, comparing to like the camera and, you know, the 10K that you're feeding 100 homes almost, I think your design is 20 homes right now. Is yeah. that an opportunity to expand, draw another ring in the yeah, houses? When we saw that we overskilled our model, we kind of uh, going into in redesigning and to make it more efficient for because we know when we initiate the solar trailer, um, naturally the, the load expectations of the, the customers will continue to increase. So we intend to integrate this subsequently okay. or to other areas that have already has high consumption capacity. So you've got a dot com address that. Yeah, but we are working on the creating a non-profit arm of the enterprise. Uh, so where exactly are you in deploying this system that you described? <coughs> You've got some funding, but that doesn't sound like enough to do it. 
Dobbers there yet, and still with the study. Um, we've actually started the first phase of the project, which is the community entry, getting to um, interact with the dwellers and make them more at home with us and the projects we want to introduce to them. And we hope by September or October, we hope to make a shipping of solar um, data for the community and also building another um, system for the agro industry. Let's go back to your schedule. I, your schedule I mean, this, these check marks seem to say you already done something with the bank of industry or something, or is that I'm just reading more into this than I should? You got the foundation grant, the bank of industry Nigeria partnership. What does that mean? The, the bank of industry partnership. Okay. Is that the $8,000 that you got? The $10,000, yeah. 10, okay. But the whole idea of the, the Bank of Industrial Partnership is to, for a full-scale commercialization, which yeah. is like our phase two of our project. The phase one of, the, of our project is the pilot where we intend to study the, the success factor on you know, the project and how to scale it up or okay. replicate it to other settlements in the commercialized setting. The other one is the other check mark is this partnership to turn that into a sustainable business. This one? That one, yes. Okay. Um, the River State Sustainable Development Agency Partnership is, is also tied to the tripartite and partnership. So their role, because the project is going to be cited in their state, so their role is to create an enabling environment for the project to thrive and also to help us with linkages to all the relevant government agencies within the state and also to provide logistic support for the project. Consumption per capita 
compared to like Cameroon or, or South Sudan? You know, is it well, it should be the consumption Yeah, per capita. Is it, is it less than Cameroon and less than? Well, they didn't compare just Africa. They compared yeah, I didn't world. see the we just want to yeah. get a gauge on you know where they're at in terms of. Yeah, but there was another. There's one other African. There was Ghana in the. I think it was Ghana. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Lower than Ghana. So. Yeah. I guess it's number two in half. The, one last point, okay. One other point I missed out was and the partnership with UNDP. Mm. After we must have developed the business, physical business model mm. in partnership with, because of the agencies, <coughs> they will then cost up it. They will assist us in getting in developing in development financing like low interest loan from international development agencies up to the tune of 70% of the five-year plan. And they require us to get like 30% equity. Then the, the entire um, project budget will be under 80% guarantee from the USAID. Yeah. So have you talked to the USAID? Uh, no, not directly. Um, you and the Bank of Industries like the mediator between us and USAID. Talk about next steps in terms of plan and the risks and challenges and so on. But uh, are you still waiting for uh, a dependency before you can proceed? Like you said that you requested a deferment of the grant from IEEE. Is it now time to receive that grant, or are you still waiting for that dependency to be? Oh, yeah. I asked him that. He said, he said, well, he said they're still waiting on it. Still waiting for what? The dependency still. to be cleared or or for the year no. to be? Waiting for, for a response from, from my, Oh, okay. So you're ready to move when you hear from them. Yeah, but um, not be something. We're already going on with some, some of the preliminaries. Yeah. 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 And while also in running the, the pilot, and concurrently we'll be working on developing the 5G business plan. Related to the full scale commercialization. And I also didn't quite understand. Uh, I know you referred to the role of the Sun Blazer in this. How does that fit into the scheme? Yeah, um, I pointed out that from our initial design, we figured out that we, we use the traditional yeah. development model, which is not sustainable, but um, coming down with the idea and other. Um, Particularly the Serena Haiti model, we found out that our system was way, way overscaled for the community who want to supply energy to. So we are you know, going to order a, a sun blazer to power because there are about 80, 80 houses in settlement. Oh, okay. Instead of this? or in yeah, instead of this. Instead of that. okay. So you, uh, you would abandon the not really that we abandon in when the community demand increases or right. we find a more suitable in community that has something that is similar to, to this right. we'll adopt this for that community. Or if the, co the community we are piloting we're going to do our pilot project in if their energy needs skills up, I mean to 
install the mini grid, then move the sun blazer to another community. Right. Okay. I have another very silly technical question, but it's probably really obvious to you. But when you use this ring design and then the wires to the nodes, doesn't the first wire to the first node still drain the way it would if you had a linear? I, I don't. No, by the, the ring Somebody network, used to explain that to a light person. By the ring network, means energy is flowing both directions. Oh. So there's like a stability. If oh. there is a drop from here, it is compensated that really all of the areas within the node has to pour energy mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, a little less body drop. Yeah. Yeah. I see here. Oh. We guess our bus is coming at 5. Okay. And it's 5-2. I guess it does. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.